This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 673 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a very interesting show. How the pre-show was interesting tonight, if you're joining us on Facebook Live. But uh, with us, first of all, the only Mayhemmer with a future endeavored letter from the WWE from Beacon, New York. It is Mad Mike. Sorg, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm wearing my uh, my red, white, and blue Kevin Owens shirt. Okay, that's good. That's very because, patriotic. Because uh, the opening of SmackDown, Kevin Owens... Uh, spit his declaration of Bischoff dependence. Oh, really? It, we 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 got you know how like Raw was really fun last week and seemed a lot different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think they just alternated weeks. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, because because th- this week Raw was fucking terrible, and last week SmackDown was fucking terrible. This week SmackDown opened up with Kevin Owens just literally starting his own podcast and saying how much Raw sucks. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um we'll we'll get some more into that here in the show. But also with us, first of all, a surprise. Farnsworth's with us. Always welcome. Oh, and he hey took kids. that and he took that literally. How's everyone doing? Hey, how's it going? Uh so far I'm good. You know, I'm we, uh, I'm more dressed than us, other mm. people yeah, true, true. around. Well, I'm so. glad you're coming on the show. I don't get to hang out with you out in the wild anymore. So yeah, I'm I'm not terribly far from here. Every now and then I may swing in. You yeah. never know. I, I literally didn't know until you, you walked in. You never know. I had no idea. And then also joining us, the man of the hour. He is a former Fight Society champion and has, amazingly, we figured mm-hmm. out, has never been on this mm-hmm. show. I, I must have had a fever dream that we interviewed you. It seems you didn't. No, I didn't. I want to know. Troy Lords is with us. So you haven't, oh, right. mm, you haven't been out with Farnsworth in a while. Have you been in a wilder situation in your uh, your front window here with <laughs> two guys, one pantless on your couch? Yeah, you are not wearing pants right now entirely. It well, we said podcasting right. does not require pants. But it's warm in here. Okay. It's the summer. Yeah. Summer's heating up. So are my pants, so they're gone. They are definitely not there. Not here. Wait till you see what's behind the pay window, folks. <laughs> you take it to the pay window. Uh, yeah. You get, well, the, you get the Patreon, and it's Patreon pants off. Patreon pants off. Fuck, trademark. Come get it. Jeez. Five dollars. It's not even, it's not even um, five dollars. If if you may not it's know, a lot less. You pay 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 per inch. This despite despite uh, him not being on the show. Amazingly, I can't believe we never lined this up. Um, you have had an influence on this show for uh, most of our 14 years in existence. As uh, mm. even when I said, "Hey, uh, Mad Mike, Troy Lorge is going to be on," and what did you do in the ch- in the Slack? Balls hot. There you go. Oh, thanks, yeah. Mad Mike. Uh, yeah. So, just if I could say something at the beginning, at the start of, I'm sorry, we talked talked about this a little bit. The issue that I've had. So, you you posted on Fight Society. You said you had an opening. You're looking for somebody to come in and uh, promote the show. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's a perfect opportunity to promote Fight Society this Friday night. Changing to Friday nights. Mm-hmm. She saw it. <laughs> a woman just walked past the window. <laughs> we need cameras on the street. But anyway, you said you needed somebody on the show, and I said I would love to. You said you need somebody that's up on current wrestling. I wasn't. Okay. You said you need somebody that knows the format of your show. I didn't know it. But. <laughs> But today, I thought I'd catch up, so I saw a great interview, the one and only Paul Atlas, a man that I just oozed respect for. It, mm-hmm. was, it was great. And I realized I wasn't on that show. It was, it was this one. So then I watched your show from last week. <laughs> and uh, Keith thought he is a baby doll. He's adorable. has an amazing voice. I love Keith Hott. Everyone does. He's a hugger. Yes, uh, absolutely. Zeke, Be- Zeke, best well, hugs in wrestling. Yeah, Zeke's going to have a great career as long as he's silent. <laughs> At the beginning of the show, and, you know, just like when, you know, there's different people that talk about wrestling, you're not going to agree with all their opinions. And mm-hmm. I didn't. 
but he kind of, you can't even believe anything he says or it doesn't have any merit because some real dummy, some rap bastard, son of a bitch at the beginning of your show acknowledged it as being good, but said it was better than Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. Hi. That dumbass that lives in the TV right there, <laughs> right there said Spider-Man 3. Yep. A good movie, better Better than Batman Begins, that is false, incorrect, anything he says. Do not listen to him because he has no idea what he's saying. Nothing can, he says matters. You don't matter. Can I explain my rationale? No, uh, I'll, I'll do, I'll I just it. said it doesn't matter. I'll do it, no. in, I'll do it in two sentences. No, dance it. Will you dance it? Will you do interpretive dance like Peter fucking Parker? Will you do this in a jazz studio? Um, <laughs> hey, you know what? In that movie, Spider-Man doesn't kill, but Batman does. And Batman, be mm, Batman, be this, Batman like kills a lot of motherfuckers. He doesn't kill anybody. No, he doesn't. And no, the he doesn't. He hurts. He extremely hurts. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna go down, if you're, if you're, the point of Batman is that he does not kill. We have not had a live action movie to date where Batman has not Oof. killed. Someone. I, I so will all say, your, all I, your podcasts I, like this. Uh, not, this well, I, no, no, well, yeah, yeah, but usually, it, usually it's about arguing about Spider Man. Usually it's about like WWE versus uh, AEW, and there's no pants. And but, oh, but this is a new talk level. About Batman yeah. and Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, you brought it up. Um, no, we'll just agree that you're um, wrong. I'm glad that we started yeah. off that way. You're wrong. Most of the chat room, except Zeke Mercer, is on your side, Troy. Hashtag Zeke Squad. And yeah, I, and exactly. I, yeah. And I, and Hang imagine, your hat on I'm, Zeke. Join uh, the Zeke Squad. The hashtag uh, Troy Squad. A squad of two. Hashtag Batman doesn't kill. Ah, nope. Anyways, this is, is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I have to do my my notes, or the producer will come back from California and kill me. Um, okay. Intro by our friends, Basic Sickness. Go check out his music on a variety of all those streaming apps out there with the musics. Um, also, uh, please uh, check out uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links and subscribe to us in podcast and video form, or look us up on your favorite platform. Ask your uh, Google Home, uh, Amazon Echo, and uh, Apple Home HomePod to stop being creepy and play the Wrestling Mayhem Show for you. And his up at that email address. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmamshow.com 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and help the Wrestling Mayhem Show page and group. A lot of great discussions over happening over on where we just share memes with each other too. Um, and if you're catching us later on one or on one of the other outlets we might be streaming on uh, and have some comments or just want to tell us what Matt, uh, you disagree with Mad Mike on, uh, you can tweet at Mayhem oh, Show and use the hashtag WMS673 and uh, those will get to the proper officials here at the show. Have you played Spider Man? Have you played the PS4 the game? PS4. I, I don't because I have tossed no. MFers what? off that off those buildings. Oh yeah, like like oh, that, they, like that, they were water. Are balloons. you like Noir Spider Man that, that, or Oh, oh no. no, I was no. I was I was Peter Parker, Peter Parker, friendly neighborhood throw thug your ass tosser. off a building. Yeah. 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 friendly that, neighborhood that, thug that's tosser. You choosing to make that choice though. You're, you're, you're uh, I had no weird. choice. I was trying to web him, and Peter Parker was like, "No, fuck you." And then there was a nice kick to the face, and he. Went it, it, a nice arc. I'm okay. off the okay, well, I'm not, But Spider Man, the video game, is not what we're talking about. You're, you're choosing to like a uh, dumpster fire, uh, two and a half hour poop fest known as Spider Man 3. It sucks. We're going to move on. This is. Oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just finding a link in the chat for all the people Batman has killed. What the? But it, he oh. killed them in a good movie versus <laughs> Spider Man sitting around. Dancing in a terrible I, movie. You know I what? In a I terrible heard, you movie. You know what? Batman kills someone. And you know it's who? Not and you know who? We we're pretty sure didn't kill anybody. Our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com. God, please let me get through this. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Our friends at the fan of the show dollar level. Oh, diggity. Woo! There you go. Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Team Hamifist, and Tina Keys. And our friends at the Pocky Club, $5 level. Bradley Brothers, Doc Remini, Dave oh, Podner. Yeah, that's right. Bradley's on there. Kyle Turner and Daniel Towery and our buddy at the $13 level, Ryan Clark. I wonder who that could be. I wouldn't be surprised if Bradley already has photos of me without pants on. That is true. No uh, he's a Patreon. I haven't taken him yet. We haven't removed the pillow yet for Patreon. I'm guaranteed Bradley has that. I hope we don't have a drop in subscribers after this. Oh, we're going to have a raise. Probably, probably, uh, of <laughs> like some this sort. pillow. Yo, and our manager level, um, Occupy Pro Wrestling. 
uh, uh, supporting the show as well. Guys, there's a lot of wrestling uh, this weekend. Of course, Fight Society, as we mentioned. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit here later in the show. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and some of the mem more members of the roster are popping up in the chat room. But aside from that, there is some uh, wrestling uh, Saturday and Sunday. Not only is there a pay-per-view, not only is AEW doing yet another free show, but it was a, a very surreal this week uh, for me. First of all, just seeing um, a bunch of friends of the show from the AEW wrestling uh, school uh, popping up on NXT uh, uh, for a segment, but also just Evolve being discussed on Monday Night Raw was very weird to me mm. last night as they're talking about this 10th anniversary special that's happening uh, this weekend. I, I mean, we know that Evolve has had a, a relationship with WWE for a good long time um, with, I mean, you know, between footage popping up uh, with a lot of the guys that come up through NXT when they get introduced, like, you know, especially around Cruiserweight Classic and things like that. Um, but this is kind of signals something new that they're actually going to broadcast an Evolve show on WWE Network. We've heard rumblings of this for a while. But, um, I, I mean, this is, is this the NXT to NXT now? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's necessarily an NXT to NXT. Okay. Uh, Farnsworth, you had, you had your mouth, mouth agape ready to pounce on that. I view it more as pure counter-programming. Okay. Mm. That you think this is a full shot at AEW? I, I think that it's probably the smartest shot they can take because it both, they can both paint it as, we're supporting independent wrestling mm -hmm. and at the same time putting something out that will distract from the, the rich new pretty kid in town. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I guess maybe if it was a different time, but WWE network is streaming, right? Mm -hmm. So I assume this is going to go into their library or whatever, wherever it goes to. And yeah. the way that people are consuming media today, if I was home right now and not, pantless on your couch if i was pantless on my own couch i would have the ipad on the television on so it's not necessarily going to take away from that you could have both mm -hmm. you know how ridiculous wrestling fans are they're going to have everything at once it's going to take away from anything and i think the way they're using evolve is maybe a preview or to get a introduction the fans that might not be familiar with the evolve talent mm -hmm. they might give them a preview of who you're going to see in nxt see Farms i don't worth i don't think they care about the show itself i think they care about what you talk about after mm. and they're giving you something to talk about besides aew they've they've posted the whole card for evolve if you guys want to hear it really let's hear it yeah yeah i found the whole card on uh dot com um i don't know a lot of these guys so if you guys do feel free to interrupt me um josh briggs versus anthony green with brandy lauren okay uh, Kurt uh Stallion. Anthony, Anthony Green, we've just seen a couple of times here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, okay. Very entertaining. Retro AG? I believe so. Okay. That's the one I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, Kurt Stallion versus Sean Maluda. He's an NXT guy. Mm -hmm. uh, versus Stephen Wolf versus Harlem Bravado. Okay. Um, special challenge match uh, Baba Tunde, who's an NXT guy, versus Colby Carino, who we know from like Ring of Honor and stuff. Right, right. Um, not uh, Harlem Bravado, as in the Bravado brothers from ten years ago. I believe so. Okay, really? I'm they, not. They, I'm, not I'm not positive. I mean, they don't have pictures or uh, like a like a graphics or anything up. They're just yeah. Listening when matches. ROH first started their TV, like, uh, like think when Kings of Wrestling were still there. Mm -hmm. One of the other teams was the Bravado back brothers. in the ECW Arena two day taping days on yeah. HDNet. Yeah. yeah, I rem I remember the name the Bravado Brothers. I it does sound familiar. Okay. Um, Anthony Henry versus NXT superstar Arturo Ruas. Uh, Anthony Henry and somebody else we've seen a lot here in the area with, with some pretty fantastic matches. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know who Arturo Ruas is. Um, I don't either. This is going to be a yeah. lot of introductory to people. Even like there's half the names on the card. Oh, know. okay. He's uh he used to be Adrian Jaoud. Okay. In uh, NXT. Yeah, no, he, he's a performance era guy. Um, Matt Riddle versus uh, Cruiserweight champion Drew Gulak. Okay. Ooh. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm a uh, big I think fan of Drew Gulak. Oh, they used the to stuff, be in a stable together, I think. The stuff they're doing now with, with the Gulak where he's uh, super serious. and uh, is, Troy, is Troy asleep over there? No, right no, no, no. No. Okay. Oh, no, you just lost sunglasses. I'm into today. this list. Okay. It's real bright in here. Okay. 
Well, you, studio lights, you know. Studio lights. Yeah. All right. right. And, um, I know about studio lights. The Evolve Tag Team Championship match, Eddie Kingston, who we know, obviously, mm -hmm. and Joe Gacy are the champions, going up against A.R. Fox and Leon Ruff. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. That just sounds fun. Because, um, I, I mean, we know A.R. Fox, so that I, I just love to see him, so it's all good. Um, the Evolve champion versus the WWN champion. Um, I'm not sure what WWN means, but uh, it's WWN. Austin Theory WWN is like the network that carries like it's Gabe Sapolsky's name. Uh, I don't know why these. Oh, are. okay, okay. So it's like Evolve Progress stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Evolve Progress, like, like, like those things. So it's like the it's like gotcha. if there was a WWE Network champion, like that would be the okay. equivalent. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's the Evolve champion Austin Theory versus the WWN champion JD Drake, mm -hmm. and they actually post a video of the two getting into a backstage conf confrontation. Okay. Which is crazy on WWE.com. And um, the top match they have listed here in the NXT Championship match Adam Cole, baby, versus Akira Tozawa. Ooh, that'll be fun. So, I yeah. mean, there's some good crossover kind of enhancing that. And these are all, from my understanding, all the people that come, coming in from WWE are all former Evolve people, right? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some guys like Daniel Bryan. Right, right, Jack right. You know, like, like people who have worked in Evolve before just show up at this show. Because mm -hmm. it's, is it in, it's around the tri state area, right? Uh, in, in like Philadelphia area, probably. Yeah, it, it's in Philly, and that's where Extreme Rules is. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's going to be some crossover, I'd so imagine. So I'm trying to find the full card for uh, the, the, the opposing card. We, I know we got Kenny Omega and Shima, which really, I, I keep thinking DJZ. Um, I know Brandy Rose is in a match. We have the uh, Young Bucks against the the Rose Brothers, uh, Cody and um, Dustin. I, be I believe Brandy is facing Allie. Yeah, facing yes. Allie. Um, so I mean, a really good card. Like I think what you would expect from from that. Um, and um, I saw SCU versus the Lucha Brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is going to be actually free on Bleacher Report, just like the last show was. So I mean that's the thing for me. I mean I mean obviously I'm going to be uh, occupied myself with local indie wrestling, uh, with an RWA show there on Saturday. So I mean just like this last one, I'm going to watch the next day. Today. Oh, and uh, two other matches we have: Adam Page versus Kip Sabian, mm -hmm. who was on commentary during uh, Fighter Fest, and Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allin, and Joey Janela versus Oof. MJF, Sammy Guevara, and Sean Spears. Wow, Oof. there you go. Um, so I. Again, kind of to your point, like not only are we watching on multiple devices, we can watch whenever we want. Yeah, we can watch whenever we want. And like, I guess I'd be the casual fan because I can't. There's too much wrestling. Right. I can't keep up. I know some of those names, but like there's going to be this is Saturday. Yeah. So we're going to do. Uh, and there's a WWE pay-per-view. Yeah. So we're going to do Raw, SmackDown, and then we're going to do NXT. Yeah. And then 205 is thrown in there. And then Saturday we're going to have. Shows going back to back Sunday going into and then most likely a four hour pay per view. Don't then, forget Ring of Honor. Check your local local listings at two a.m. Um, <laughs> or whenever I want to watch on on Monday on Fight Network. Um, you know it, it's yeah. There, there's a, there's a lot going on. Yeah, it's like who is this evolved show for? Like how many? Like I didn't know who those people were, and I'm a kind of a wrestler. And then. Like what the fans? Like what fans are going to know who this is? It's going to be the same fans that are going to watch. I think there's an interesting thing happening. Like I, you know, I think we see this in the local area. You know, you know how many promotions are in the area, right? Uh, it's it's, which has been a yeah, it's insane it's how insane. much wrestling's in the Pittsburgh area. Like to the point where we had to start a web, and, and to a point where yeah, we had to start a website to track it. PittsburghWrestling.com. Um, what is it? PittsburghWrestling.com. That's PittsburghWrestling.com. I, I didn't. I didn't want the plug. I didn't. I never heard of that. Before. Oh, okay. Well, wow. we're working on that. We're cool. working on getting the word out. Mm -hmm. But, um, but no, you know, certainly. So, so not only like a you know, place is thriving like here, but just I think, I think the the, the audience is bigger than it has been in recent years. Maybe mm -hmm. not attitude level, but we're everybody is so divided by. There's we have our WWE fans, AEW fans, say Impact, ROH fans, right? But then there's like I watch. Tina keeps telling us about all these promotions in the Northwest. Like there's those, you know, there, there are people, I don't know any of them, but there are people that follow the evolved WWN progress, you know, European groups. You know, like 
right they wouldn't be still going if there wasn't enough people to support i think wwe wants like it both ways they want the the big production that they have then like on, on my twitter if i'm following like a celebrities a few comedians like paul mm-hmm. Shear, i'm seeing him um at uh pro wrestling gorilla i think that indie wrestling is the cool thing now and yep. wwe seeing how they can cash in on it and they've been really pushing that they uh, want the cool indie vibe but then yeah. they're gonna go in and i'm assuming it's gonna be a wwe produced show when they're doing evolve right I mean, so is it going to take away from you can't you can't that indie vibe? No one can deny to me that uh, NXT isn't a better produced Ring of Honor. Absolutely, right? It, 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 it's it's they took everything and let all those guys do the things they were doing there or in the evolves and stuff, and just just go to town and have great matches. It's it's wild. It's wild to see a takeover mm-hmm. and then watch a Raw or even see a pay per view when you're seeing the Canadian Destroyers and there's 27 uh, finishes leading to mm-hmm. no finish. And then you watch the pay per view the next night. Is it take away? Is it taken away from the pay per view? Is it, or is it just is it is the broader audience seriously the ones that watch, that watch this yeah, and that's why they're doing it? Okay. It's weird that it's one brand, but it's such a different style, such a contrast. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at those guys when they come up. You know, you I've had this argument a lot. Like you look at the roster at WWE, and a good half of that roster could hang with anybody on NXT. Oh, yeah, right. absolutely. Right? Well, my half guy, of them did come from NXT. That guy was into that. Can I just walk past? Oh, new friends. Yeah, Making new out. friends. It, I, mean, I mean, I've been over. I was in NXT, but the one that put me over was uh, Velveteen and <laughs> uh, Champa, Champa, mm-hmm. Tommaso. I guess a great match, but I saw Velveteen do they did so many ridiculous moves. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you only invincible? Uh, a few times a uh, year, like when you're doing these takeovers, mm-hmm. you could take DVDs to the floor and elbows to the floor and DDTs to the floor and these eight other moves that lead into nothing. And then on Wednesdays, you're you know beat by something simple. It's like it just it the the takeovers just become just too much. It's like it's almost like it, well, it is it's I ROH mean, they, on steroids. They also are usually title matches too. So I mean, you get you can like throw in that. Oh, they're fighting a bit harder. They're yeah, digging deeper. We, we've had like getting deeper reserves because there's more on the we, line. We've had Super is. Cena syndrome in the past too on the pay per views, right? right? Like, hey, it's WrestleMania, nobody will die, mm-hmm. right? That's not Undertaker. Um, so, I mean, I think this it's that big, big show storytelling that they let the the, the handcuffs off on there, except for you know, and Johnny Gargano is just the most unkillable thing, you know, whenever he's on a takeover. If I see one more dead face, just dead Johnny Gargano, just days <laughs> Johnny Gargano in the apron. But he's I can't so good, handle it. He's oh, so Johnny good at awesome. being dead, Johnny Gargano, he's isn't great. he? Yeah, he found his calling. Yes, I love him. <laughs> oh boy. Well, um, it comes down to the fact that everyone who's there now was highly influenced by Japanese Kings Road, mm-hmm. absolutely, and they've mm-hmm. taken it. Uh, they've uh, the problem is you can only take that mm-hmm. so far mm-hmm. and now it's to the point where it, it, uh, so scott hall once made a point about how he'd never let anyone kick out of his finish right he's like i he's like maybe i hit him with it and they roll out maybe i i hit him with it and then you know i'm too exhausted and i can't get the pen but I never let anyone kick out of the finish. And then from that, it became, well, like he had a valid point. He protected his business. Mm -hmm. Now it's not his, the issue is it's not his business. It's NXT's business. So they're not protecting any one person. It's no one's, no one's the chant of NXT is every bit as loud as the chant for Champa or dream Mm -hmm. or anything else. And that's because they've been taught that this is what's associated with that brand. Mm -hmm. And to keep that chant going, to keep that loyalty going, they have to keep upping it. And they're running it. They're they're So so this is they are pressed to the ceiling. This this is the old this is the old ECW problem, isn't it? Because we always we always had to escalate, escalate, escalate until people are jumping off of buildings and where do we go from there? Right. This is is the uh, what was it, the the Memphis concession stand, stand brawl. Yeah, uh, that like Jerry Lawler uh, 
talked about it. Like, you know, once you get there, you ha- you, you go and you do it again, but you got to make it more violent. Mm-hmm. And then you got you have to keep pushing it. And frankly, I would rather they keep pushing it with with safe moves rather than, you know, ECWs will this choke them up and drop them on their head. Germans on the apron. Who who was it? Abushi took that German on an apron. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Was, no. yeah well, the, you guys are freaking out because you forget that wrestling's fake. And that's not really his neck. So. <laughs> so like, it was gimmicked. And then his, that's the thing. His like, neck was gimmicked? It was, it was, yes. It was a gimmick neck. There was he already borrowed a neck? A, Sorry, was already I, I'm a, using a, an insider term. Yeah, the, yeah the apron, we don't do that on this show. The apron being the hardest part of the ring is a cliche now. Yeah. Yes, Guys are is. just doing that, and it, it's, it's, been, it's, it's absolutely been a cliche meaningless. forever. And I'm saying this as a person who brings up that cliche and commentary every chance he gets. It's just so. the dumbest thing. Just, And it's not just one match. It'll be multiple matches, and it's on the apron. Especially in New Japan. Absolutely. And especially today, you know what the hardest part of the ring is? Hmm. Troy Lords. Oh, yeah. That's a fact. Uh, that is a wonderful a transition, as we uh, should uh, what mention. Is this be? Where can you see Troy Lords? One, you can see him this Friday, uh, this Friday, Friday Night Fright Nights. Fight Nights, not Fright Nights. That's something <laughs> else. I don't know. Where are we going to go with they this? Do call, they call me the Friday Night Freak. <laughs> there you go. That's official. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Man, that nice, nice, nice you movie. Come get freaked on Friday night. You can see a lot of uh, a yep. lot of Troy Ward possibly tonight too. Over at IndieWrestling dot US. It was and weird when you weren't wrestling on Fridays. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can see. That's really why we just leaned into this. Since you came back it, it, to Fight Society, and it all works. IndieWrestling dot US. You can see a lot of Fight Society, including the great match you had. Um, I think at the end of the year uh, for the Fight Society Championship on, that you were unfortunately injured in. The title match, what I did when nobody else could do. That's right. Beat Patrick Hayes. I beat Patrick Hayes. Nobody else was able to pin him for close to a year. It took a half hour. I was the last man standing. Did it all. One arm. One armed. One armed. One armed. Nothing against Patrick Look Hayes. Hell of a competitor. But exactly. seriously, one arm. One arm. Look at this. Sorry. Yes. Wow. You see that? Is your, is your arm supposed to go like that? It's not. I don't think You're it's not supposed, supposed to, to have no. a dip there. No. Here to here. Cut open. Oh, back here too. Back here. Brand new. So it's good to go. Doesn't move that much, but it's good to go. It's hard. Uh, new arm it's ready hard. ready for punching. Ready for punching Dean Rafford's giant bloated head. <laughs> this is what it's specifically made for. That's what I asked the doctor. I said to the doctor... I want this as hard as possible. Make this fist as hard as possible because it's going to go through Dean Rafford's giant bloated head. <laughs> and we're going to find out this Friday. You want to see what's made of Dean Rafford? I'm going to try to pull it out of his skull. There you go. That violence and more over at IndieWrestling.us and, of course, even more at IndieWrestling.network. Um, a lot of great stuff. We just posted Black Diamond Wrestling from Sunday. And then uh, the week before, speaking of violence, our friends at Prospect Pro Wrestling, or as we like to affectionately call it, Gampino Pro, uh, my last man <laughs> standing match between Jamie Jameson and Bronco McBride. Um, and uh, Uprise, some new talent there, including friend of the show we just played had vi- playing video games with uh, the other night, uh, Brohema taking on MV Young. That's mm. a free match you can see on our YouTube for IndieWrestling.us. Uh, a lot of great interviews coming up. A lot of great in the last uh, few weeks as well. I know you said you were watching the uh, Paul Atlas one uh, before. So um, a lot of great stuff from the area. A lot of up and coming names. Um, oh, Dean Radford is in the chat room too. If, you, if you've been around uh, Pittsburgh Pro Wrestling for a while, I mm-hmm. recommend you have to go back and listen to Paul Atlas. It brought up a lot of memories. It was real, like my time good. starting being a fan it was real good um speaking of Paul's going great. back there has been a lot of uh old matches that have been going up uh lately between uh, uh pwx network facebook and the indie wrestling youtube page and i think a lot of old, your old matches have started surfacing a little bit on really too yep uh i'll be getting that pay increase and i'm gonna be seeing the royalties that'll be the yes absolutely <laughs> checks in the mail i'll be looking <laughs> yes Yep, that that's always a good phrase in that indie wrestling, thing. right? Mm-hmm. So, but it's out there. Hey, a lot of people get to uh, see the greater two thousands now of Pittsburgh independent professional wrestling. Come take and, a look. And, Come get it. And hell, nineteen ninety eight, a lot of that too, popping up lately. Absolutely. So, including Paul Atlas when he had the long hair. Um, Troy, Friday night, 
Uh, you guys, again, like we mentioned, Friday Night Fight Society. It is a big change for this. Uh, but, of course, you've been part of, I think, Fight Society since the beginning of it. Since the beginning. Mm-hmm. I was listening. I was thinking back when Paul was talking about the formation. When they took the PWX letters down, they took the belts down, threw it all in the ring, and we started new. Mm-hmm. I was on the outside. I was watching that. Yeah, there's there's plenty of companies that have been around for a while in the area. Again, as many can say, too many sometimes. Um, but uh, this is the first time there was a real shift like that, and and you know, and this this shift going on here uh, lately kind of feels like one of those too for kind of refresh what's going on with Fight Society. Yeah, it's a little. It was a reboot, uh, a little bit from uh, you know the old PWX and wanted to start something new. You go into that building; it's not like any other venue that you're going to go see wrestling at. It feels like you're going there to see a fight. Mm-hmm. It's it's not fancy. It's not a, a giant sports complex. It's a little dingy. Mm-hmm. It looks like you're at a fight club. You're going to see something nasty. And if I'm in the ring, you are going to see something nasty <laughs> this Friday. If you want to see nasty, you want to see downright debauchery, this is where you want to be. Friday, come see it. You're going to see that. Alternately, you could stop by the giant window in front of Sorgatron Media and uh, see something nasty. Right now as it's well. A little preview. So, it's a little, a little preview. Little preview. You got to give them a little taste. Um, Troy, you know, some of us, of course, we would, we, you know, when we're talking indies back when we started this show, uh, you were always part of that conversation. Um, you know, I always cite the great match. I remember you in a uh, Super Hentai, I believe, was a ladder match, if I'm not mistaken. La- I think that was my last man standing. Was a last man standing. The there was a, there was a ladder there. Um, and I believe that was my second independent professional wrestling show ever. There you go. I mean, I was surprised. I heard uh, Jack Pollock said the first wrestling show he was at with uh, Marcus was in Butler, where he saw me open with uh, CJ Sensation. There you go. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Super Hentai, you know, they say a lot about him. I'll say right now, um, I'm not going to be the first to say it, Giant Dick. <laughs> <laughs> But he's he's a really nice guy. (laughs) Yeah. Great wrestler. (laughs) Giant dick. Yeah. It's like a baby's arm holding an apple. Baby's arm. It's like a baby. It's a full baby. (laughs) I'm not saying it's big, but it opened for Atlantis Mora set in ninety four. But anyway, one of the the, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I'm gonna save all my nasty for Friday. I'm gonna hold some back. But talk about a, a guy that's been around, the guy that's done everything. He's been to Japan. He's like one of my mentors, amazing guy, still going. Martial Championship Wrestling, you'll see him there. Pasta Pro Wrestling, Prospect Pro Wrestling. He's Prostate Pro Wrestling. But he's, he's trained people that are on TV now. He's trained people, him and Shirley Doe. You look back at guys that are stars now that have been through the Pittsburgh area. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you're going to start with uh, Shima. Sion. Obviously, yeah, Shima, DJ Z. Wa- where walking, walking wild. Walking wild. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Sorry, I was, walking, I was doing air horn for him. Walking wild. Uh, Gory. Mm-hmm. Gory's been all over the globe. Mm-hmm. Facade is always in a different state, different country, all moments. If you want to know where he is, just check mm-hmm. social media. He'll be there. You're in the gym. He's taking pictures at the gym. He's walking around the mall. He's neon all the time, all <laughs> yes, day, twenty four seven. He absolutely is. The, yeah, the neon ninja is is Michael Facade turned down to. Hey, hey, so, hey, dredge. Facade! What are you doing in this grocery store? And you're, I noticed you, uh, because you're neon. Yeah, he lights up. He lights up a room. He's <laughs> yes. a sweetheart. But I mean, the impact that Shirley Doe had. Um, you take Shirley Doe. He had an impact on. Um, we were saying super hentai and just mm-hmm. everyone else, all those people that you mentioned. Now, I think Elias was a Elias, trainee. Elias trained. I was there when Elias trained. It was in a old uh, ring that Doe got put in a super hot. You always hear about the the stories about how hard wrestling practices and training is. It was in a gym a little bit bigger than this, just to fit the ring in. And it was a ring that they got from the Civic Arena. It was an old oh, '80s wow. ring that they also used for boxing. Wow. I'd rather fall on this floor than fall in that ring, and that's where yeah, that's where he trained. Wow. You could all, I mean, honestly, you can also discuss the whole idea of the different styles in wrestling, like the fact that people know Lancashire and ProRes and Pancras and all of that comes from the. A lot of people trace that back to Chris Hero and. Uh, Mike Quackenbush. 
Absolutely. The two people that that really discussed and like brought it to their style and taught it to everyone else. And part of the reason that both the both of them know as much as they do is because of their they both knew Shirley Doe. This is Shirley Doe knew Mike Quackenbush when he was at Pitt and Chris Hero will openly talk about watching Shirley Doe's videotapes. Mm -hmm. This is why you have to get out to these indie shows. I don't care if it's uh, Prospect, if it's Marshall Show, if it's Fight Society, IWC, if you're at uh, Rise, Uprise. I remember when I started with Still City Wrestling, I heard you and Paul talking about Still City Wrestling. I would go there, and it was uh, Mike Quackenbush was coming in. Mm -hmm. Quackenbush was in. It would be Don Montoya. It would be Mm -hmm. Reckless Youth. And these would be people that, like, there was a little bit of a buzz. Mm-hmm. And then now look at mm-hmm. Mike Quackenbush. Reckless Youth's like, he's like a myth now. <laughs> <laughs> Barely speak uh, his uh, name. Uh, Quack <laughs> is doing, is doing like, guest training sessions at the Performance Center. Yeah, at the Performance yeah. Center. And then you go from what Still City was and then into a little bit later on into IWC. And you see everyone that started there was CM Punk and... AJ and Hero, Colt Cabana, Colt Cabana, and just goes on and on. You don't know who you're going to see at this indie show. That no is matter where go you're on at. to be somewhere else. No matter where you're at. Not in this room right now. I mean, <laughs> anyone in this room is not going to amount to anything. Everyone that knows Adam Cole, baby, mm-hmm. uh, got to catch him at IWC at one at one of the super. In, what was it? Super Indie Nine. He did. It was. Well, yeah, yeah, it was like nine or ten or something, yeah. right? Yeah, back. I in the mean, day. all of these—they've all made their way. He was one of those, you know, back, you know, probably only a couple years into filming shows. Mm-hmm. He was one of the first guys that just like soaked up the camera, paid attention to the camera, and it was just like, oh, this is new, and this guy's going to do something. You know, like nobody was doing that back then, and you know, and I didn't know to te- you know help people do that right at the time, and and then you know, years later, you see this, right? You know? And, you know, I see somebody that I see people that get excited now for these uh, NXT takeovers and for the all elite. And I remember like in us, we were saying when I was done with IWC, it was like uh, 08, 09. And I remember mm-hmm. seeing a guy in 08 that did like 10,000 arm drags. And I was like, I, I can't wait to wrestle him. I'm sure I'm going to just love him forever. And that was Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I see people that love him so much now. You know, what I say to those people, you know, what I say no farms were. What do you say? So were you at that show? And what are they? Were say? you going to any shows? They go, no. That's yeah. when I choke him. Yeah, I choke him there. I've seen if it. you're really if you're gonna ride the jocks of these people now, you should have been there at the beginning. That's what I say, Ryan. He says it. He says it. Who? Excuse me. Oh, hmm. I know. I'm sorry. So from those, you're of course doing something a little bit different these days um, as Troy Lords. Your your um, uh, persona in Fight Society these days. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Different from. Different from Balls Hot. Was it that different from Balls Hot? Uh, there's more glitter now. Yeah, there's a little bit more glitter, a little more glitter, a little more leather, a little less clothing. Mm-hmm. But see, that's the <laughs> thing. You start off there, you don't really know who you are, and you don't get a chance to be you. Mm-hmm. That's the great thing about wrestling. See, I hear the guys, they say that they're going to, you know, all these guys, all these wrestlers are super excited. They're going to go to their show, and they're going to be their character, right? That's what they're into. They get to go and portray this person. See, what I do, I get to go be my character would be Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 4, 7.30 to 5, maybe till 6, maybe till 7 when I'm at work. That's when I get to be my character. Mm -hmm. And then starting Fridays and it was Saturdays, but now going heading on to Fridays, I get to be me now. I get to go on, I get to put my face on, and I get to go in a ring and I get to perform and I get to fight. That's what I get to do. That's not a character. You get to be yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what you're seeing now. Me, pantless on the couch. That's me. During the week, the suit is wearing you. Suit is wearing me. Wears me well. But see, this is... Before, there's a lot of guys, you know, you go through, and especially, I think it was being in IWC, I felt like you, when you're seeing guys like AJ Styles and you're seeing guys, uh, CM Punk, and they're having these great half hour 40 minute matches you're thinking that's what you have to do you gotta be the you know work rate guy in tights absolutely right? and i'm like i'm gonna be this work rate guy in tights and that's not who i was it's mm-hmm. not who i was as a person and it wasn't who i was as a wrestler or athlete because i couldn't do it mm-hmm. i can do some of it 
I could do more than Enrico Nardini, uh, the ghost, Glenn Spector. I did a lot more than he did. And I think I did more because I was stronger because I did a lot of carrying. I did a lot of carrying him. But I realized I'm not that guy. And then once you become more uh, into the business, more familiar with yourself, you realize what's going to work out best for you. And that's what you're seeing right now. Right now, surprisingly, I started in 2001. And we're here in 2019. <laughs> you're seeing the best of Troy Lords right now. Yeah. Well, it really right hit now. your stride. Hit my stride. And you want to talk about carrying. Joe 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 Dombrowski, as long as we're talking about carrying. Mm. I just want to thank him for carrying me for all of these years. Seriously. I like... I, I, I'm, I just ramble on. Thank God Joe Dombrowski is there to, to actually do the actual work <laughs> mm -hmm. so that I can, I can throw the glitter. I can, I can put the sizzle on the steak. So you're, you're talking about funky Joey D. Yeah. Funky Joey D. Funky you, Joey you've D. you've yeah. met as funky a, as Joey D. Big time funky Joey D. I'm yeah. Familiar. And that explains why there's always glitter on all my equipment after our shows. I get it. That's not why. No. No. Okay. It's great. If you, all you have to say, if you want to go on to the tap show, you want to go out and see, see the dance? All you have to say is I wrestled Troy Lords, and that's why he came home in glitter. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect out, guys. And it's everywhere. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And well, if you don't want to do that, then uh, Saturday, Threat Level Midnight, IWC show. I mean, I, I would like to thank Fight Society for uh, for making this not be a competition. Now, <laughs> there you go. both sides now this is less get to shine. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, so... Mm. Uh, so fight, fight society this Friday night, and you will be taking on Dean Radford, as we talked about. Yeah, said uh, something about us. Uh, what was his head like? We're gonna find out what his head's like because I'm gonna see what's inside it. Okay. okay, I never thought much was in there, and I was like, I really would like to see what's in there powering him. What's powering that gigantic? What are, makes that head swell so much? That gigantic ego. Are you thinking it's gonna pop like a balloon, or like, or like a crowd, maybe, or like split like a melon? Ah. Uh, I like to see some splatter. See, I'm glad that I'm on his couch because the, the first time I saw his couch was Dean Radford sitting here with the, the title belt after I shattered my wrist, destroyed my wrist. Doctor said it was like a bomb went off. I didn't even take the belt with me. So Dean then took the belt, came here, and stripped me of it. And I understand that he's going to say, and Quinn's going to say, and whatever, fight director of chaos, whatever the hell Dean Radford is. And it's funny that Dean Radford's all of a sudden in office. And when I'm gone and he, you know, finds an opportunity to win a belt and all of a sudden he's a wrestler. That's cool. I'm glad you figured to work your way into that. But he came here and I saw him and he was giving up my belt. And giving it up not because I was hurt. He was giving it up because I had it. Dean wants it. He's a belt mark. He's a Dean mark. That's all he is. And we'll find out what he is. We'll find out what he's made of because I'm going to have it all over my hands. Could be like a kickball. Your hands may just bounce off. Fight side. You're going to find out Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. And again, Fight Society, uh, stay tuned. It, 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 get down there. Check it out. See what you've been missing. See what's new coming uh, to Fight Society. And if you're not there, um, stay tuned on social media. I think you're going to want to uh, um, see what's going on. Uh, via that as well. Sounds like it might be a surprise. So might be a couple oh, of things in coming. the works coming up mm. uh, that may carry over the next several months. So, um, with that, I want to give a shout out to our friends that uh, support us here. Hey, we start the podcast day uh, here in, right in the dinner time with our awesome cast friends uh, and our friends that have been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for a good while. Our friends at Slice on Broadway here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they are. They did participate in the bottle cap challenge recently, actually. Uh, so go check out that video on the Slice on Broadway social media on yeah, Instagram, Facebook, um, and of course their unofficial, of course campaign. If you have a, uh, I know we have people in our even just in our chat room that are in the in the Northwest and uh, getting shook up over there in California. And uh, if you have a, a Broadway in your neighborhood, these guys started with one location. We want to help with that global expansion, not just Pittsburgh. And uh, uh, take a picture of Broadway. Tweet them, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and tell them you want to Slice on your Broadway. Uh, Tina's out there saying until Slice on Broadway uh, has a uh, franchise there in Seattle on Broadway. Uh, not impressed. She's calling you out, Slice! 
Go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Tell them to get to Seattle. I mean, you know, get some good pizza along with that great coffee, right? So um, we are going to take a quick break and be right back after this message with The Big Question and maybe another guest. Mm. 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 Pants, I can't promise. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show, we are back. Troy Lords is uber... Co- well, you were even more comfortable over on the break there. We're back. Like extending. This sinking. isn't for... I was getting ready a little for a Patron. There you go. There you go. He's he's all it, it was super relaxed for the second half. Farnsworth is with us as well. Hello. Howdy, kids. Hello, Farnsworth. Um, so and Matt Carlos joins us. What's Hello. happening, everybody? He is... Struggling through, he is uh, doing the complete climax. G one climax. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Mike, with us as well. Struggling through that climax, ain't that, Carl? <laughs> it's worth it to get to the climax. <laughs> you work and you work and you work, and finally you get to the end, and then it's just over. Mm-hmm. And you're like, just thank God. I always thought Not the G one was a myth. <laughs> Anyway, that, that was solid. Wow, solid. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, Thank you. I, I've, I've been workshopping that. He's, he's still a Spider-Man three apologist, but I mean that was solid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, we can maybe we can bring them together by the end of the show. We'll see. Mm. We'll Missy see. says we should have a Batman watch party. Yeah, per, perhaps we should. Um, anyways, it is time for the big question, and of course, there uh, we talked about a little bit last week about the uh, new management, uh, Eric Bischoff, and. Paul Heyman, SmackDown, and Raw, respectively, um, as the, I believe, executive director was the official uh, term that they're they're being given. Um, so ideally, they will be kind of head of creative control there. Um, but let's be honest, they got to go through Vince still. But uh, still, these are guys with a track record with, a, a, you know, that have been very interesting uh, between WCW, ECW, and even you can look at Paul with uh, SmackDown in the 2000s. Um, and... Bischoff with TNA. And Bischoff with TNA as well. I would. No. Yeah, yeah, you man, was, look at it. I'm not saying you should. You yeah, look at it. It's that, an example. But... We were adding things to a list of wrestling that was interesting. Yes. Well, it was mm. interesting, but not for the right reasons. It was definitely <laughs> interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for, I mean, Mike, Mike had to slog through that one. But anyways, um, so we maybe have seen a little bit of, of you know, pinnings of those new changes between Raw last week apparently smackdown tonight was very interesting uh mike was informing us earlier uh can't wait to check that one out in the morning but um so and, and mike you're gonna have to be now i'm wondering if i want to phrase this right as you put it but what is one change to a raw or smackdown you'd like to see for the better uh in yeah. this new regime and this can be based on past knowledge of creative you know ideas that they've brought from the past or or new ideas you think they could implement something that you know, the show that would, that would make God a three hour show. And let's just go ahead and disqualify, mm. um, knock Raw down to two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Let, because let's, that's we're just, that I think is outside of creative control. I think, um, I think the only way that happens is if somehow Fox makes a lot of money on a two hour SmackDown. Yeah. Well, with that or just, just, they start losing money in general. But, um, well, yeah. but that's, that's a whole other discussion. But creatively, you know, what, what do you think? Um, could be something to get things. <laughs> Tina say. says immediately shorten the time. For Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have normal lives, and we can't do three hours of wrestling on Monday. Yeah, no, seriously. it's funny because it ends three hours earlier for her. That's true. That's true. She's not even. Tina's like, I can't deal with this shit ending at eight o'clock. You guys, did I tell you about how I was pissed off that I was like, I was stuck in L.A. I'm like, okay, at least I get to watch. Uh, was it Raw? I think it was Raw or something, right? Like at least I can go watch Raw, right? And then and then I tune it in, and it's halfway through because the channel was not time. I thought that everything started at eight o'clock. Time shifted in California, and I was <laughs> in my hotel room screwed me. Uh, mm. But anyways, um, anyways, any anybody have an answer, my Mike? <laughs> um, one thing I would do, um, I would switch back to a two-person booth. Yes, mm. it's getting crowded out there. I, I oh, would sorry. switch back to a two-person booth. It doesn't have to be the same two people for the whole show. 
I think. I, no, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't okay, have to we be. We do you have can bring in specialists. Here, here's a question on that. Well, well, Farnsworth, is it if you have a long show, does it help to have that switch off, or is it better to to? In my opinion, a, you've done some long shows. I have, and I'm not a fan of three person commentary. Mm-hmm. I agree. Cut it down to two. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I think that you. You can have a natural rapport with someone, but you still have to get into the rhythm of it. Mm-hmm. And switching people out is going to interrupt that rhythm. Okay. That's okay. that's my opinion. I mean, yeah. you can switch out the entire team though. That's what I'm saying. Uh, like that seems, that sure, seems but then you're still you're you're still not getting them you have to give them the time to get up to speed. Well, it's like so it's so like I know I know when we do the, the production side, it's always like the first match is kind of getting our feet under us and mm-hmm. getting our rhythm for the night, right? When we're especially when we're doing the live production, right? You know, that's where most of the mistakes happen. That's why it's nice when there's a pre show match. It's every rock concert I've been to, the first yeah. song is where they're trying to get the levels right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the same basic idea. Yeah, so, um, and these are professionals doing this on the highest level, but still, this this still applies to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, interesting. Interesting. It, it, well, is there anything you would like to change, Farnsworth? Are you around commentary I or something else? I would change it from, I would take both shows and say, it make it focused as a show about wrestling as opposed to a show about a show about wrestling. Right, 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 right. Focus it back on the actual what's happening in the ring Mm -hmm. instead of you're trying to tell a story and, oh, they'll wrestle about it eventually. Yeah, yeah. See, I feel... One thing, uh, one of those interviews from Heyman I was listening to, um, he was really big about... And this is, I think, I think it was when they lasted the brand split, right? Um, His thing would be, hey, this didn't work 10 years ago, Right. Um, in the long run. But if you do this, if it has any chance of success, they need to feel like two separate shows. Absolutely. There needs to be... And, and SmackDown had a different vibe in the talent and the interesting stories a little bit, but it still felt like just another WWE show. It felt like Raw 2, mm-hmm. Night 2, still, despite the different roster. And it's even worse now that they're doing this crossover stuff now. I hate it. Um, Like, that... You know, that division needs to be there and there, that vibe needs to be different to the point where 205 Live feels like a different show to me, right? Style and everything, presentation. Uh, NXT obviously feels like a different show than everything else in style presentation. NXT UK feels like a different show. Like, give me at least that much separation in presentation, whatever that may be. Ab- the, the set's the, cha- the same, everything, right? Absolutely. That- it doesn't need to be to the point like remember when you'd go to a, you'd see a pay per view and it was a totally different set. There was themes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to go to that extreme, but I, the only thing that's different between the two shows is the color, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know if this helped uh, him get the job, but hearing Bischoff talk, what he says is it doesn't have to be both, but like the production value, it's too clean, mm-hmm. it's too sanitized. Mm-hmm. He's like he wants it to be dangerous. He wants it to be different. I think the most exciting thing that I saw in wrestling last year, it might have been last year, but it was uh, the USG one. I can't remember who who he was taking on, but when uh, Switchblade did the Russian leg sweep into the uh, or whatever he did when he threw oh into the into the promote into the into the announcer table and Barnett went after him. Barnett went after him, and there was absolute chaos. Yeah, you didn't know if this was planned. Yeah. You didn't know what was going to happen. What happens if Barnett gets a hold of him? If this is a shoot? If Barnett grabs him, is he going to actually do something? That was the most exciting thing I saw in wrestling last year. Mm-hmm. And there needs mm-hmm. to be more of that. There needs okay. to be excitement. It needs to get dirtier. There needs to be... It's just too clean now, and it's not entertaining as it was. And it, it seems like, you know, whether you liked the last night's Raw or not, it seems like even the last two weeks, I feel like you're getting a little bit of that what can happen. Like not again. It's still the sanitizer rest of the product, but between the set explosion, which I kind of saw on the side, I was checking in during a you know meeting wrapping up, right? And they just kind of left it there, and it wasn't the producer. They didn't have the cameras on the thing. Mm-hmm. It felt like oh god, an accident happened, right? Yeah. Like that felt like oh shit, something's happening, you know. 
the for the moment they had me last night when they had the the quote unquote janitor in a luchador mask um starting to pop off like you know crazy lucha shit right Mm -hmm. um which turned out to be cedric alexander you know like those are like brings back the anything can happen and that's definitely missing for sure but 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 also yeah raw raw has looked the same for 15 years absolutely more or less Mm-hmm. You know, look the same, yeah. started the same. You're going to start off with a promo. It's going to lay out the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. And that's been like, the same and, since and, like the wars. And they're redoing so many things between each show. Like, yeah, the ricochet in the club thing. That was almost beat for beat what they did with Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Right. Right. Like I like and it's because of this commercial business that has gotten in some people's heads like you don't need to have a five minute match break for a commercial then have a different five minute match mm-hmm. two it, out of three matter, falls yeah it doesn't a- matter what form doesn't there were two two out of three falls matches on raw a couple weeks ago yeah it, two of them it, and i don't is there an explanation like did they say in the show why this they don't is, say in the show they mm. just say this is a two out of three fall uh, this it, is this is where and I, and I feel this last week i feel like if even they came out and said hey we're going to have like a competitive initiative to explain why we're having two out of three falls more i'm cool with that all right i i know it's really your commercials but at least you tell me as the wrestling show why we're doing it Right? Yeah, or wouldn't it be great if like this guy won this match and they mm-hmm. this guy won the next match and now you know they're tied up. Yeah. So yeah. guess what? It's two out of three falls now. Now there's at least a reason for doing it, but then they'll do that. They'll be like, it's two out of three falls, or you know what, this match is gonna be we're just gonna throw a random last man standing match or mm-hmm. it's all these random gimmicks in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still like the idea of using a TV timeout. Yeah, he's been yeah, uh, Mike Mike pitched the TV timeout idea last last week for that yeah like um, like i think, it, I think it'd be kind of, i think it'd be kind of interesting you would add more of a sense of urgency to the matches mm-hmm. because like if you're on a roll you want to try and finish someone off before you get to a tv timeout or conversely you can take a powder mm-hmm. like you, you can roll out of the ring like like catch the mare and then like get saved by the bell almost. not like, if you're in a duchess of queensberry's rule, mm-hmm. rules match though well, I mean, could, that's, that's only that. for pay per view. Let, let, let's, let's let's not give away the fun. That, those are only for pay per view. Like, what's the benefit of this? The whole of not having matches during the commercials. What what was hurting them? Uh, what is Fox, somebody... Fox gave them a lot of money, right? Is, is like, that the deal? Yeah, uh, it, it was it was something about just not having matches roll through commercials. Like, there's no NFL now. Nobody's yeah. switching off to Monday Night Football and not coming back. Like, yeah. what is happening during those breaks? Oh, that guy's face. Um, not not a lot. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not a lot. I'll, I'll I mean, tell you that. What, what was happening? Like rest holds, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it when um, I think it started on SmackDown where they were doing like how the NFL does the uh, mm-hmm. picture in picture. They will do that from time to time. I think it's dependent on what kind of advertiser they've sold it to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, probably. it's not just hey, this is a thing we do every week. I think it's just hey, this movie's coming out. We'll do this and play the trailer, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, they're not doing it with with um, paper towel commercials or something. I don't know. Um, you know, generally, like you would see on the NFL. Or, but or, even those, like they don't do a lot of moves. It's a lot of rest holds and stuff. Even during that spot. True, true. But at least there's a little bit of if something could happen. You know, you feel like oh, I'm not missing anything. But also, you could be playing more in a little bit of FOMO by having something happening. I guess they used to just play it on the app before right. the network, I believe. Like you mm-hmm. just tuned in over there and just caught up, you know. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I had the. I had remember having my little iPad Mini open as soon as it went to commercial. Mm-hmm. You go right to the app and you get to see the rest of the match. Yeah, and if it's something significant, of course, that would come back around and they replay it. But at least, of like, course, yeah, you got to see it live versus not, right? So, yeah. Um, interesting. Mainstream Matt, we haven't heard about you. What would, what's your big change for Raw um, lately? Lately, <laughs> uh, I, I you know I'm, I'm puzzled by the commercial break thing because mm-hmm. like I don't recall it being that big of an issue. You know, ten or fifteen years ago, you know they would have a eight or nine minute match within the confines of a single segment, and it'd be fine, no big deal. Uh, Lucha Underground notoriously. And I liked it this way. Never broke in the middle of a match ever, no matter how long it went. Well, on these 15, 20 minute matches. And unless never- it was um, like uh, Essex Warfare or something like that. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, or all night long. Or all yeah. night long, yeah. Other than um, saying that I think Troy's right about it needs to not be as clean um, and a uh, three-hour thing has to go, I think like talent-wise, they need to kind of follow the pattern of what has happened with Kofi and what's happened to a certain extent with our truth, you know, veterans who know what they're doing, who know how to, uh, you know, get themselves over quote unquote, uh, they need to get those guys, the experienced guys on their roster and I get them elevated. Like mm-hmm. guys like, you know, Cesaro and the Miz and Daniel Bryan needs to get back up. They need to get those guys back up to the top of the card. Those are the guys who, have the experience and know how to, you know, work in that environment. A lot of these talents that they're, that that are working a lot of these main event matches just aren't done cooking, frankly, Mm. in my opinion, at least, you know, they need to work their way up to to the top. You know, I just don't think, you know, there's people working, you know, main event, semi main event matches. You don't have any business up there. You know, they need to go to the guys that, and the girls that they trust and that they know could do it every single time. Um, like I said, I mean, I think Kofi and R Truth are good examples of what happens when you give those guys opportunities. They they deliver. That's true, but I'd like to see more guys on top. And it goes back to the brand split. You have a ridiculous amount of guys. You don't need the same guys on every week. Seth Rollins, he's a great wrestler. I don't care about him at all, and it's probably because I've seen him on Monday night have a twenty minute match every Monday night. Then you're going to see the same 20 minute match and it's (laughs) going to be great. But I've seen all of its stuff. It's not like, and I hate saying like going back in the day, Bret Hart was a great champion. Would he be looked at the way he is now? If we saw him every single Monday, every single week wrestling 20 minutes, you didn't see your champion on. You would see him at the pay-per-view. And then I think you'd value their match more if you're not seeing the same match Mm -hmm. every single week. Absolutely. I think there's something to be said about like variety too. Uh, one of the things when Nitro was going really well, like so many different styles of matches, like European style and Lucha and all that other stuff. And they've got guys who can work different styles. They just don't let them do it. Mm-hmm. But that would go a long way toward helping those three hour Raws get broken up. You know, yeah, I, I know they tried to go five five guys and it hasn't worked, or at least they haven't stuck with it. Uh, but I, I, I think there's a place. For that, as far as breaking up the uh, uh, the monotony of three hours, that's why takeover works a lot because you will have like different styles of matches. Like you'll have your NXT title match, which is usually like an ROH style, ten thousand finishers, everyone kicks out of everything, and then you'll have like a UK title match where it's British Trunk style, mm-hmm. or you'll have like a crazy tag team match with like ladders and stuff like that. And Shayna Baszler who brings in like the submission style or Matt Riddle, same thing. Like the MMA strike fest, you know, like there's a lot of different characters in NXT. that are allowed to wrestle like they want to wrestle where Shinsuke Nakamura, this the first time that we've seen him be Shinsuke Nakamura in a very long time was tonight on SmackDown against Balor. Right. right. All Elite's doing a good job of that so far with their shows is giving variety. You get a lot of different flavors all at once. And maybe it's just them, you know, trying and seeing what works. But it's it's really nice to switch from, okay, here's a Joshi match, and now here's a six-man tag, and now here's a hardcore match. You know, you get a little bit of everything. Yeah. And we're still shaping what that TV is going to look like for them, of course. So uh, we'll see how that rolls. So I think I got everybody uh, from the chat room. Well, it looks like everybody's talking about um, um, house hunters. My, Matt, what's going on in your household right now? Uh, I would assume that after Finn went off TV, mm-hmm. Jen immediately flipped over to HGTV. Okay, okay. That's why Potter <laughs> and, and her are talking about it. was a hot okay. episode of House Hunters tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's our uh, other podcast on the Sword of Trump Media Network is House We're Hunters. We're talking that right now, folks. There you We're go. There you go. All right. Well, hey, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, catch up with uh, uh, Matt about what's happening across the pond. No, the other way. I don't, what's what's the what's pond. is it? What's what's a Pacific Ocean? That's not a pond. It's That's, a goddamn ocean. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's the ocean. <laughs> The Atlantic Ocean isn't a pond either. Well, I mean, we call it the pond because that's, you know, with our brick friends. 
Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> if you, hey, we do a lot of stuff, uh, you know, we do these, this podcast every week, uh, for, uh, 673 weeks, uh, but that has been, of course, turned into a lot of other things that we do here around the Pittsburgh area and across the country, to be honest, from sporting events to music production to conferences and everywhere in between, the, ta- the team here, housed here in Sorgatron Media Studios at Sidekick Media Services, has you covered as a sidekick to your superhero project that what a next big thing can they help you with we help you with this team all the people here oh, and, and help the team is in california part of it right now um helping produce this show actually find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com and of course if you watch uh, a lot of that wrestling over at indie wrestling.us you see a little bit of the product of what we can do out there and what's happening with fight society of course featuring troy lords yo yeah do that <laughs> yeah. do that uh <laughs> Mainstream at. I don't know why this is chiming over here. I'm so sorry. Um, I, got, I think my window settings uh, I got. Mike, what did you do to our window settings? This is because you got hot and you broke my system earlier. Um, I didn't do anything, but given that you were talking about during the break what happens to your windows, I'm not surprised. Yeah, my windows really need squeegeed right now. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Matt Carlins, what's happening in Japan lately? Lately, lately, uh, not a whole lot. Um, there was there was something in Dallas last Saturday. What? Um, yeah, well, New Japan did the, the uh, first night of the G One on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it, it was it was a good show. Look, look it was disappointing because they booked the American Airlines Arena Center mm-hmm. and uh, they had a little trouble uh, getting that thing filled up. Uh, okay, so there wasn't a whole lot of people there. But the show. Do you know the good. capacity there? Like. Something crazy, like eighteen thousand. Like it's a mm-hmm. big one. Mm-hmm. Um, That's where they have Raw the week before. Yeah. So, what, uh, do, do we know what the attendance was? Because the last pay per view did not do okay for WWE. Uh, I, I, I've heard like four to six thousand. Okay, I mean that's so, honestly. Uh, that sounds around about the the six to eight, you know, that we 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 saw for Stomping Grounds. So, yeah, but Stomping Grounds was in Tacoma. This was in Dallas. Yes. That's that's a big difference. Or... True, true, true. Yeah, but you're also talking about the WWE and their roots go, going deep into the into America versus G, the G1 in New mm-hmm. Japan mm-hmm. and their limited reach. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's... What what has been the the greatest draw of a New Japan show that wasn't a conjunction with an American company, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously we have Madison Square Garden sell out, but again, that was not just them. There was an American company in there. Like we know who probably produced the better product of the night. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, pretty sure we know. But who but that's sold that but arena. still, I, I I don't know if they could have sold that out by themselves immediately, right? No, not I. So. It it was ambitious. Mm-hmm. It was also foolish. Mm-hmm. I also don't know like. I don't know what their other options were. Mm-hmm. So. But but anyways, how did that go otherwise? Yeah, I mean, it's not like the only arena in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I don't know if Dallas is the right city. I mean, I don't know, like Chicago, that might have worked better. Mm-hmm. When you think of wrestling towns. But anyway, um, it was a it was a fine show, Sorg. Um, I'll tell you right now who won on the first night. Uh Lance Archer beat Will Ospreay, and Bad right. Luck Folly beat Evil, and Sonata beat uh, Zack Sabre Jr., and Kenta beat Kota Ibushi, and Okada beat Tanahashi. So that's uh, the first two winners. Uh, now, the tournament is going to resume on Saturday morning, and they'll be doing the other block. That's the one with uh, Moxley and Naito and Jay White and their friends. And uh, that will be getting underway uh, very early Saturday morning. And then there's going to be three straight days. So it's going to be early Saturday, early Sunday, and early Monday. Uh, Do you have yeah. notes? Great. Well, they have these things. So. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this the, is this the like, the no one, no one posted this on Twitter. If you check my Twitter, I retweeted this a little while ago. Okay. Some, some nerd. <laughs> uh, it's helping keep track so if you're like me and you try you're easy to keep, lose track because as i discovered when i was following the best of the super juniors 
it was tough to keep track of like who's winning and who losing. So now I could just like you know see who's a winner, just put a little dot there, and I could see who's uh who's winning and who's losing the matches, and uh, try to keep track because uh, there's just a lot going on. Okay. All right, can we discuss Zack Saber Junior.'s comments? What did he say? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh no! Wow, that's a that's a nice face. That's a nice uh, uh, bracket of faces going on there. Well, that's your car or something. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, what does Zack Sabre Jr. do this time? Zack Sabre Jr. said that uh, what wrestling his his wrestling a match in front of an American audience is equivalent to trying to wrestle in front of dogs. They just won't. <laughs> they just won't appreciate it. Wow. I, I got to in Farnsworth. I think the quote was actually uh, that Zack Sabre said that doing technical wrestling in front of an American audience was like reading Shakespeare to a dog. Reading Shakespeare to a dog. That's wow. correct. Wow. That's, <laughs> that is a great line. <laughs> I mean, I can't, you know, he's not completely wrong, probably. Uh, but, <laughs> um, so, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think it depends on the crowd. Yeah. It's all right. Sorry, what's it that? It depends. Matt? It. I guess that just proves his point. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the crowd. I think. Yeah. To um, be fair, it depends on the it depends on the dogs too. So. Uh, <laughs> yes. And it depends on the Shakespeare play. You know. Mm. Also sometimes, true. Yeah. Sometimes they'll they'll um go more for Hamlet. <laughs> um. You know there are bones involved. Matt, I, I I've been catching up on some New Japan myself. Of course, I I get I get it through the access filter and check out what's on demand uh, for mm -hmm. them over there. So I was getting caught up on. Uh, first of all, I did watch the main event lately of the G one the G one Supercard from Madison Square Garden. Um, was that uh, I believe it was Okada and Jay White. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, the uh, John Moxley and the Young Lion that he was dragging around for a little while. Yes, uh, yes. that was fun. What's that? He abducted him. Yes, he did abduct him and said he's going to drive his car and, and you know, yeah. order things for him or something. Um, so they're going to be tagged together on the tour when they're, they're on yeah. the off. -line. So it yeah. is going to be John Moxley and Young Lion as a tag team on the tour on their offense. Yeah. I yeah. think his name's Shota Umino. I think that's Yeah, it. Shota Umino. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that, like when they're not doing the tournament matches, they wrestle undercard matches, preview matches. So he'll be tagging with his abducted young lion against I don't know, whoever he's going to face the next day. So that'll be fun. Oh, fantastic. I think I don't good. know what Moxley's got in his head with this one, but it's, mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Either way, you can tell when somebody's having fun and the reins are off. And that's, yeah. that's definitely what I saw from that. Yeah. I have no idea what that looks like. No, no, no idea <laughs> what that looks like. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, uh, anyways, you were, you were talking about that you were catching up a little bit, and yes. you had uh, you sounded very excited when you saw uh, Osprey versus Dragon Lee from yes. uh, the Kid show a little bit ago. That yeah. was an awesome match. I mean, you you can have I mean, you can have an opinion about like the Osprey Osprey style and and you know the the, the flips and the maneuvers and everything, um, but it, there's it, it it's just him and Dragon Lee. There's definitely a certain certain art to it. And it was a lot of fun with that. And I think Okada had another match on that too. No, Okada Jericho I saw, which is just something uh -huh. else entirely. Uh, so, um, no, it was really good. It was, And I'm always surprised because I'll turn these on and I, don't, I never realize when they have two-hour episodes. And sometimes you'll just get like a 55-minute episode that's one match, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah. You know, the main event of, of, of uh, Wrestle Kingdom or something like that uh, that went for 45 minutes and, you know, with commercials um so yeah it, it, it's always a good experience and it, it helps me because uh, matt when i get on new japan world i kind of get lost on there because there's so much going on and then i have to kind of navigate for you know the first 20 minutes of uh running down the card in japanese and and whatever sponsor is that night and stuff uh but uh it, you know like, so especially like g1 like how much of g1 are they going to show on uh uh Oh, climax are they going to show on access right it's going to be highlights right so yeah but and i know and i know i've seen your bloodshot eyes after you've tried watching entire tournaments in new japan yeah but you know what i love i love the best of super juniors mm -hmm. and uh i i, I really uh I, I did go all in on a g1 um i think a couple years ago and i really enjoyed it too that there's like a level of obsession you can you can kind of like pace yourself like if you want to watch like 
every single match on every single show, and that's like the preview matches, the tags on the undercard. Yeah, you can kind of lose your mind a little bit, or you can just jump straight to the, you know, the tournament matches, you know, which is going to be just five matches. You go through those to reach thirty minute time limits. You know, sure, there's some that will probably go to the time limit, but there's going to be ones that you know only go twelve or fifteen minutes, and then you're you're home free. So if you handle it that way, um, might not be quite as bad. Uh, and then, you, or you could just you know put your ear to the ground, check your grapple app, do whatever you got to do, and see what's getting a good rating, and then. Go in and pick and choose as you go along. Um, I don't know. I I, I don't know. Um, I guess it, you have to be in the right mood. So in my frame of mind right now, I'm ready to watch some damn new Japan. Um, the uh, the last tour, <laughs> whatever. What did I call it? It was like New Japan SmackDown, the last tour that they did. Uh, <laughs> I was watching, and uh, I was like, okay, this is this is nice. But I'm ready for a full course meal. I'm ready for some some G ones. So. Mm -hmm. um, the show Saturday night was uh, was really good. I'm um, looking forward to uh, seeing what Moxley can do. Um, still oddly oddly intrigued by Kenta and just what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's like like I'm sitting here trying to do like predictions because all these different websites do pickums for the G1 and like the the block with like Naito and Moxley and Jay White. I feel like I've got that figured out. Like I had the picture for that done really fast, but like the A block is impossible for me because I can't figure out Kenta's role. Like, I don't know. I don't know how good he is at this point in his career. I don't know how good new Japan thinks he is. I don't know how good new Japan wants him to look since he wasn't always, you know, has, you know, was with, you know, Noah, whenever he was over there before he jumped over here. Uh, he's like the wild card of the entire tournament. Like there's a part of me that's like, they could just run Kenta all the way to the finals and, and go like that and make him, a killer or they could just be like you're you know you're just old kenta you know and you're gonna go five and four or something like that but i, I have no feel for how they're gonna handle him uh he's yeah so to me he's like he's the wild card of the entire tournament uh it, and everything kind of hinges on what kenta's gonna do mm -hmm. it, it, yeah it is kind of curious like is the magic going to be back with kenta uh with this you know hearing about how things were going in wwe and you know Oh jeez, I just saw a clip of some Maverick stuff. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, he won't get attacked in the parking lot by a random assailant again. Mm. Yeah, that'd be a shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, stay stay up on that, and of course, if you have any thoughts, keep an eye. I'm sorry, mainstream Matt will be um, doing the early morning posts as you watch it after your uh, overnights here um, for New Japan as well. You're, so I have the access filter, and we, I have the uh, the, the mainstream Matt filter when it comes to New Japan to help me out. So I'm, I'm here to help sort because, yes, I right. mean, look, I'm no expert on this stuff. I'm just a casual, you know, New Japan viewer. I've only been into... He, he's really a young all, lion, if you will. Last, you know, I'm, I'm like a New Japan young lion viewer. Yeah, that's yeah. basically it. Uh, so I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm only four or five years into like really following the product. Uh, but it, it speaks to me. I enjoy it a lot. And uh, I have, I've cut back on my time watching other professional wrestling products so I could save myself for this one. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what we're going to get. Excellent. Well, with that, uh, thanks for that. And, uh, you know, keep us, again, keep us up on any uh, big New Japan news as it comes up. Hey, we we're talking about how there's too I much wrestling. Us. All caps text promptly. All you. caps text. That's when you know <laughs> it's for real. <laughs> Hey guys, we're yeah. talking about how there's too much wrestling, and we also mentioned briefly about how uh, you know uh, we kind of needed a tool to help, especially just in the Pittsburgh area here. Uh, you ever wish there was just a schedule of the local wrestling in your area? Uh, you're if you're mm -hmm. in the Pittsburgh area, you're in luck. PittsburghWrestling.com has a calendar that covers news and information about local wrestling, plus a calendar to help you know who's running when. Check it out at PittsburghWrestling.com and see some of the wrestling you've been missing. We list everything on there of of significance within an hour of Pittsburgh. You know, whether it be, of course, Fight Society, of course, our friends at Rise with a Y, uh, RWA, and other promotions. Um, they're all listed there. And even stuff that comes through. Whenever Ring of Honor comes in, WWE, I need to put that raw on there for August. That reminds me. You can make your wrestling plans for the next month at uh, PittsburghWrestling.com. Strangely, I believe, I don't think this has changed, but all of the wrestling in Pittsburgh is happening within two weekends of July. 
Really? Yes. That is right now four promotions running within the two weekends because the fifth one just canceled and moved to August. But uh, NEW with Corey Graves and the Bruno uh, charity show just moved to August. I just found out tonight. No. So we will be reflecting that shortly on there. Um, but uh, I know Kaiju was in town. Like We get a lot of stuff. Not only is there the promotions that run here every month, but we are getting... Do we consider Kaiju a wrestling show? I Yes. This is a, this is along the the arguments of you know, is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> it is a little bit, isn't it? It it kind of is. It's uh, along the arguments is Spider Man Three straight up poop. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You really want to bring this back again? Oh, right? uh, let's not do that and find out what everybody <laughs> learned from wrestling this week. Uh, who wants to go first? Please, holy shit! Please, I learned I that uh, pants are optional. Pants are optional. Yes, I mean that's kind of pro wrestling in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> yeah. I see what you did there, Sword. Mm, Mad, Mad Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that uh pickles and ice cream are a thing because women, am I right? What? Oh, they were the Maria segment. Yeah. Yeah. No, that no, that was terrible. I'm not good. That that was a horrible segment. Um I, I learned that uh you still can channel Stone Cold without beer. Mm. I think Steen or uh Steen. Uh, Owens is the right person to do Jill that. Jill Steen. Right? Yeah, right. Although, if he brought out a few cold Molsons, wouldn't be opposed to it. No. No. Um, <laughs> Mainstream Matt, what about you? I learned that pants are a prison. And I also <laughs> learned that uh, Impact Wrestling might be back. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, we, we didn't talk we about that. Talk about I heard a lot of good things about their show over the weekend. Uh, uh, see, and main event, your boy Sammy Callahan versus. That's right. Tessa Blanchard, I heard it was really good. I heard there was just good good matches up and down the card. So uh, I'm feeling mm-hmm. compelled to actually seek out Impact Wrestling again. Yes, yeah, so I did actually try to seek it out and then realize I couldn't find it anywhere uh, today. Uh, pursuit channel, Sorg. You must pursue Impact Wrestling. The, if you pers- want the pursuit. Yeah, I get I get. I get the joke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Because um, I was not about to sign up for $8 a month for Impact Plus um to watch the latest episodes but i'm sure i can catch it on the stream or something um and i'm usually busy friday nights especially this friday night for friday night fights which we'll talk about in a moment um what was the thing i said i learned last night oh i did what was sub thing that i talked about last night i learned that the apparently the purple nurple is a illegal wrestling move yes apparently I, it is. um um rev was uh putting the putting it on a uh, one Gavin Jacobs at BDW. Well, I had him in a, another move, and uh, the ref started counting. That kind of surprised me, but um, I didn't I know call that. that I call that into contention. You call that into contention? I mean, it, I mean, maybe it's just like a ref. Um, referee's discretion. Referee's discretion. Yeah. 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 Troy Lord, your thoughts on the purple nurple yeah, as a wrestling move? I'm for it. Okay, for I'm it. for purple nurples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Four. Okay. What did you learn yeah. from wrestling this week, sir? What did I learn from wrestling this week? I think the, everyone combined, uh, in definitely in this room, in the chat room, I've had more experience than all of them. So, I mean, what else am I going to learn? I think I'm in my apex. There you go. I'll go in this room, chat room, uh, Spider Man 3 knowledge, Batman knowledge. I'm at the. Okay. Okay, we'll go with you that. We'll go with that. Of course, Fight Society is this Friday, the first ever fight, uh, fight night Friday. Fight. Yeah, wrong. Friday night Fight Society. Yeah. Friday night Fight Society. Get good at that branding. (laughs) Featuring the Friday night freak. That's right. Featuring the Friday night freak. So, you're talking about all the action that's taking place this week and the next two weeks. I want everyone to support indie wrestling. Mm -hmm. I want it to kick off this Friday with uh, Fight Society and go to IWC, RWA, to Prospect Pro. Go to all of them because you don't know what stars you're going to see there. They're going to be stars in the future. So please go out and support indie wrestling. Um, If you can only do, uh, maybe you can only do one show. It happens. One show a month. So what I would say is fuck the rest of those guys. If you want to (laughs) go see a fight, you go to Fight Society. Starting this Friday night. If you want to see what Dean Radford's made of, if you want to see what's going on in his insides, you want to get a good look, you want to go this Friday night because you're going to see him all over my hands. 
Dean, I'm tired of seeing you. I'm tired of seeing your giant head. I was tired of seeing it while I was in Fight Society before my injury. I was definitely tired of seeing you on this couch groping my belt. I'm tired of you. But that's all right, because this Friday, I'm going to be able to get rid of you. Not just in Fight Society, just in life in general. Dean, I'm going to take everything away from you. Because kids, kids call me uncle. And you call me daddy. This Friday night. And you have some, say, something to say about IW, IWC? Uh, that's this. Uh, Making this, anyone their daddy or yeah, I, I, I don't. Kids? I actually, unfortunately, will not be there. If you're looking for the Farnsworth uh, or or any of the high premium Farnsworth collectibles, I will not be there this weekend. Uh, my apologies. Uh, although I'm sure you can probably pre-order with Funky Joey D. There you go. There you go. I love that's a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Love it. Uh, thank you so much. And of course, Mainstream Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mainstream Matt is with us. I'm sorry, I got the wrong person what? queued hey. up. There you go. Mainstream Matt one T on the Twitters for all your New Japan craziness. Yes. Enjoy. Big things coming, Sword. Big things. Big things. Big things. And of course, oh yeah, there's a secret secret project you're working on. Big things coming, Sword. Mm-hmm. And of course, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Also, youtubecom slash poppy. Yes. Um, <laughs> check out everything going on, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, we are going to talk to, I believe we were scheduled 7 p.m. Wednesday night with one Harley T. Morris. And at uh, 8 p.m. will be, and that will be the feature for this week on the Indie Mayhem Show. If you, if you catch us on the podcast uh, releases with AJ Alexander, who just debuted as part of Jesus Club with the Rev Ron Hunt and Black Diamond. And, of course, is going to be featured there on a Friday Night Fight Society uh, in McKeesport, PA. Please go to uh, look up Fight Society and uh, Fight Society PWX on the Twitter, Fight Society on the Facebook for more information, videos. And like I said, you really should probably tune in um, to those social medias on Friday night around 8 p.m. And uh, you'll probably um, be able to uh, find out what's going on over there and what, uh, what these guys have in store for you. Uh, but please, be there in person. It's Friday nights. There's nobody, there's nobody regularly runs on wrestling on Friday nights, and uh, I'll be excited to see what happens there. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, the chat room. A big chat room joining us from all over the country tonight. Um, all you guys, when you're not watching House Hunters, uh, I appreciate that. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.